So, um, hello and welcome to the second session of uh, our Ports and Customs Operations Lecture. Uh, in the previous video, we discussed the overview of Ports and Customs Operations. Uh, we look at the various types uh, of trans transport or port system. We had the ports at the but the airports, we also discuss the marine or seaport. Um, today, we want to look at some important, uh, important considerations uh, when we are working on ports and custom operation. My name is Fanuel, and I'll take you through this in the next 10 minutes. So, today's discussion will be based on two important uh, aspects of post and custom operations. And these are one, introduction to freight management. And then we also look at introduction to passenger uh, considerations at the port. So let's see. So the first part will be freight management and freight is mainly about goods, goods, right? Um, so carrying goods of different types from one point to another is what we will be looking at uh, in this uh, discussion. So you can see freight can be through air, marine, or sea transport, and also by road. These are all parts. Um, but when it comes to ports, operations, then we are looking at two main ports, the sea port and the marine port. So what is freight in the first place? Freight refers to goods transported in bulk from one place to another. Not, so when you are carrying your, your luggage and putting in your car, you don't normally classify that as freight. It's just a, a baggage. But when these things are carried in bulk and then it's like a whole business, then we are able to look at it at, uh, as uh, freight. Now, in Ghana, there are many ways you can look at it. Uh, but globally, there are many modes or means of transporting freight. Some are through truck, which is by road, train by rail, ship by sea or uh, uh, ocean, and aircraft by air. So these are four main areas or uh, ways of transporting freight. In Ghana, we have the, the Kaya Yo and the Kaya Nu that are uh, uh, carrying, we call it human portrait, some people call it. Like, Human means carrying goods, commercial goods, from one point to another, sometimes <laughs> looking dangerously. Uh, but they are able to manage it. And what in recent time we will call aboboya rising, but aboboya is a different uh, small trucks. Uh, sometimes tricycles are carrying huge freight uh, moving from one place to another. And these are common in villages, towns, and within the cities. Aside that, we also have the trucks that are carrying goods on. And a few trains, uh, train system is still being developed in Ghana, as you know, and we have ship transport. Um, yeah, and then we also have aircrafts. So we'll be looking at the details soon. So types of freight, we have what we call the full truck load. We have less than truck load. We have small parcel shipment, and we have large volume shipment, air freight, international shipment, and air freight. So full truck load, um, sorry, full truck load, Will, will mean trucks or um, the, it's, it's in high uh, quantity. So the truck is completely full. And there are some specifications and weight system that we use to calculate full truck and less than truck load. And we'll discuss that in, uh, later. Um, then we have small parcel shipments like items that are not heavy at all, uh, like letters and a few uh, yeah, other items that are not very heavy. Large volume freights are also there. You know, trying to ship something like several millions of tons, like oil and all that, you know, they are all large volume freight. International shipments of in goods and commodities and have air freights. These are types of freight we can describe when we are looking at it based on their size. You can also look at types of freight based on geography. And based on geography, we look at it as domestic, international, and global freight. Domestic is within the same country, like from Accra to Takwari in Ghana, it's, that's within the same country. International freight from one country to the other. And global freight, you are looking at it from perspective where it goes to multiple countries. 
uh, like DHL and FedEx, for example, carry items from one point to another in different countries. So we have domestic freight. Domestic freight in country and the services that are provided in domestic freight include insurance, storage, packaging, and transportation. So insurance mainly to cover for unforeseen events. Um, in Ghana, freight insurance within the domestic environment is optional, uh, but um, yeah, international systems is very necessary and enforced. Uh, we have storage uh, as part of uh, domestic freight services. When you want to transport something, you need to store it somewhere at a place that the trucks can come and pick them and then for easy uh, transportation. They will have packaging. Before you can transport so many things, you need to put them into packages and probably even label them so they are easy, easily movable and they can easily trace the owners or the recipients of those uh, parcels or freight. And we have transportation that is moving it from one point to another to a modal or intermodal. We've also discussed modal intermodal uh, transportation issues uh, a lot more. So let's move. Um, global in, or international freight uh, also looks at uh, the, the services here, insurance. Like I mentioned earlier, normally it's a requirement for international trade. Insurance is a requirement. Domestic freight may not be required. Storage, packaging, transportation. So for, for the two types, whether domestic or international, all these services are important. Packaging in international freight is extremely important. And because, you know, things are moving from one point to another, different countries, and so they must be properly labeled so that a recipient can easily be traced. Causes of freight delays, sometimes labor shortages, when labor, labor go on strike and all that, is that sometimes we will not... Uh, 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 get your goods on time. Holidays, yes, of course. There is extreme weather conditions like rainstorms, snowstorms, yeah, can also delay movement of uh, goods. And then inaccurate shipping information. So if you don't have all the accurate information, the things may be arriving, but you don't know when it's there, then it's a problem. Then traffic on the, on the road transport, yes. Uh, traffic in the city, especially congestion. In Before you enter or you exit a, a city, in typical uh, cities like Accra, Kumasi, in Ghana, uh, heavy traffic most of the time. Then construction and road closes, yes. Anytime roads are closed uh, or construction ongoing, these things are likely to happen. Then have other supply chain issues. Freight management. Freight management is the process of efficiently and strategically moving freight up, uh, across a network from its point uh, of origin to its desired destination using the various modes of transportation intermediaries and technology. So in simple terms, freight management is the entire process of organizing inbound and outbound goods for transport. So how do you move your goods from one point to another and all the activities, making sure that the goods arrive on time, they are not damaged and all that are all freight management functions. Yeah. So freight management processes ensure the right products get to the right places at the right time frame and at the right price. So these are major um, functions of freight management. Freight management functions um, include route, route optimization, rate negotiation, accounting, auditing, claim management, and data collection. So these are five main functions of freight management. Route optimization is to ensure that uh, uh, it's to cut down on time. So we want to ensure that our freight or our goods arrive on time, basically, using the, the best route, you know, so that we don't have traffic delays, so that we don't have winding routes and all that. Rates negotiations, uh, when we are, we are shipping or moving goods, we need to make sure we negotiate the rate so that people are aware of the prices and they are able to support our uh, 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 rates. If the rates are too high, moving, movement of goods may not be very possible and the freight business will collapse. Accounting or anything, making sure that all the um, items that have been in transit have been tracked, monitored, and ensure that things happen, uh, are delivered safely. And claim management, if there are any damages, insurance claims will come in and all that. And data collection, how to make sure that we are we, we know how things move, the time that freight are delayed, then we can avoid them next time and all that. So it's very important for you to be able to manage freight to these processes. We also have uh, other functions for freight management like tariff and regulation, tariff and regulation management, warehouse, distribution, carrier and vendor management, and finally, integrations. Okay, so 
when we talk about tariff and and regulation management, ensure that goods and and transportation are compliant with government protocols. Very important. So goods that must be uh, you must pay the tariffs on. You must make sure tariffs are the goods are declared properly and tariffs paid on them. Warehouse and distribution, making sure that there are warehouses at various. Uh, destinations or points of transportation so that when the goods get there, they are kept in a proper warehouse so they don't deteriorate or they don't get damaged. Carrier and vendor management that's maintaining relationship with everyone along the supply uh, and transport chain. Um, you deal with people, the transport operator, the drivers, other people, there must be good customer service and then integrations. That's working with the departments, transportation management systems uh, and enterprise resource planning system to make sure that things are streamlined. So um, transport owners, drivers, those who are receiving the goods, those who are sending the goods, they must all be integrated so that everybody's aware there's information flow throughout. Then we have typical freight management process. First one, can talk about is inventory and label packages. So you need to ascertain the goods you want to transport and label them properly. That's first. And then after that, you can determine the type of shipment, whether you want to do full track or less than track load or parcel services. If you are if you have determined that, then you have now map the most efficient route where the thing have to go through or the, the, the freight has to go through, then find the right carrier for that route. And when you find the right car that can carry exactly what you want, then you need to negotiate the prices and rates. Um, and then uh, when that is complete, then you work out with necessary warehouse partners along the route to see whether where would the carrier come and carry the thing. If you don't own your own warehouse, you need to use another place to ensure that the goods are in good condition before they are shipped. Then you need to resolve necessary regulations. Um, if there are any regulations with shipment of certain goods, you have to make sure you you you, you go through uh, the, the the regulation and you get them done properly. And finally, you need to track and report analytics of the trip for future improvements. So in as the trains are going, it's good to monitor it. So next time, if there are any problems, it's not repeated. Now let's look at why freight management is important. One, it helps to guarantee the efficient movement of goods between places from one point to another. Freight management helps us to move things easily. It helps to reduce the cost of transporting goods and it helps to avoid spoilage and wastages transported uh, of transported goods. If it's not managed properly, things can get wasted or spoiled uh, on, on, in transit. Then finally, it also helps to properly document goods from one point to another. Freight management ensures that the goods that are going, we know who is, who is going to, who is sending it and all that. So in case of any, uh, um, in, in case of any emergencies, we can trace the goods and other sorts. So freight documentation, there are some documentation that are needed in freight management. And one of them is commercial invoice. And the commercial invoice is normally what we call the invoice, the normal invoice. So when you are selling goods, describe the quantity, the quali qualities and the pricing. And, oops, sorry. Okay, so that is it about commercial invoice. Uh, I want to go back just a moment. I need to stop this recording. Okay, so that's commercial invoice. It tells us about how much quantities and values are being moved from one point to another. Um, then we also have packing list. The packing list uh, is normally uh, produced by the ship owner. Okay, so the commercial invoice is from the from the supplier of the good to the customer. It tells the customer how much the goods cost and all that. But the packing list is generated by the ship uh, captain or the ship company, shipping company that tells you 
uh, uh, how the things were packed, quantities, even if, if the commercial invoice says that they are transporting uh, 500 cars to you, uh, the customer, how are they packed? Maybe 10 in each cargo or five in each cargo and all that, their location and all that. That's the packing list in the ship. All right. Then we have export. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. So we have export and import custom declaration. Normally, the declaration is done at the ports. So when you get to the ports, you need to ensure that you declare your goods to the port authorities. And then they, um, they, they, they know how much you have to, uh, they have to charge you. Either that you have to pay duties or not, depending on the goods and where they are coming from. Bill of lading and seaway bill. Uh, so the bill of lading talks basically about uh, the transportation uh, of goods and services through a particular shipping line. So it's generated um, to be able to provide detailed information to the one who is going to receive the goods about the shipping of the goods, when it is leaving, which port, at which port is it going to arrive, and all that date, and all that is. Yeah, so it helps the bill of lading. It's like a seaway bill helps to um, provide documentation on the goods being transported. Then we have arrival notice or notice of arrival. Normally, normally when the goods arrive at the ports, you are given a, a, a notice so that you can present this notice as legal claim uh, with the details of the ship, uh, the, the, the shipping company or goods and other details so that the port authorities can be able to uh, give you the goods when you get to the port. Then we have free uh, documentation in terms of certificates of origin. This one tells us where the goods have been produced and it helps also in international uh, 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 trade systems so that countries that uh, are exempted from tariffs. The certificate of origin tells us exactly where the goods are coming from. And then we know whether they how to apply tariffs or not. Yeah. And importer security filing. Yeah. So the importer, if you are importing a good from a country, you have to there are some countries that require this, like the US especially, I know, they they will require that you come and file or provide information to the customs or port officials about how about the goods that are coming and um, provide them assurances uh, that you are going to receive them and the goods are safe and all that. So it's a kind of a requirement, regulatory requirement. Yeah. Letter of credit is one of the primary means of payment, international trade. If you don't have to pay for the goods directly in cash or bank transfer, credible banks can provide that credit facility to, uh, to businesses so they can use it to uh, 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 make international transaction. When the shipment arrives, then they can now make a transfer to the company. Then we have production certificate, a certificate that relates to the material types of products using uh, sustainable resources. So now we are looking at sustainability and vessel certificate gives information uh, about the ownership of the vessel, showing the condition and all that. Then we have phyto, phyto, sorry, phytosanitary certificate. The phytosanitary certificate tells us more about the, the health of plants and animals when animals and plants are being moved from one point to one another. This certificate is needed to get them. So that's the end of our discussion. There are some group assignments which you can look at. Um, so, that is it. Describe the role of freight forwarders and and uh, and other service providers. Now, before, so that is it about uh, this one. Then we move to the next video quickly, or the next session, which is about passenger considerations uh, uh, in the ports. Passenger consideration in the ports. So that will be the next video. Okay, thank you.